Hey, um, Texans, obviously, I mean, we haven't talked to you in a while, and they've made like a billion different moves. Obviously, Joe Mixon's coming over. Stephon Diggs is coming over. They're going to be very good. But Daniil Hunter, uh, 99 from Minnesota, he's coming down to Houston. He said, you know, hey, I, I won't wear 99 because J.J. Watt is so freaking cool, even though he sucks at soccer, but he's so cool. I'm going to wear 55. What do you expect out of Daniil Hunter adding on to that D-line? And then also, you know, do you think that there's a chance there might be a little sophomore slump from the Texans mm. in, in, in the boys, or are they just going to build and be unbelievable this year? Um, I'm, an, I'm a massive Daniil Hunter fan. Uh, I think that he's been very underrated for a long time, in my personal opinion. I think he's just been very consistent. He plays extremely well in both the pass and the run. Um, so to see him, in addition to Will Anderson and D'Amico Ryan's defense, I can't wait to watch that happen. Um, and obviously, I think it's it's very classy um, and cool of him what he did and what he said uh, upon coming down to Houston. So I'm really looking forward to seeing him play. Um, I mean, the additions that they made and the things that they've done these last two off seasons are very, very impressive. Yeah, I hate it. Think about where. Yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> I bet you do. Where this fran- Think about where this franchise was two years ago. Um, and then you think about where they are today and some of the conversations that are happening and some of the expectations that are being put upon this team. Um, I do think that you could say it's a situation where the excitement level and the expectation level has built so high so fast that that it almost is starting to become unrealistic. But when you like have that. a coach like D'Amico Ryans, when you have a quarterback like C.J. Stroud and the mentality that those two have and the way that they handle themselves and the way they conduct their business, I think that they are uniquely positioned to handle this situation and, and continue to excel. Do you think uh, the rest of the AFC South is cooking as well? I don't necessarily love that. Mm. Let's go down in Jacksonville. Darius got a question for you. Yeah, Josh Allen coming off his best season in his young career, 17 and a half sacks, just signed a massive deal, obviously paired up with Walker, who they drafted uh, one overall a couple of years ago. Do you think they're kind of hitting their stride and they should be better as a one-two punch? Is that pass rush or what do you think they kind of rank in the league? I think they're very good. I think he obviously is very deserving of that contract. He's played extremely well. He's another guy who, you know, almost flies under the radar a little bit with how how good he is and what level he plays at. I mean, if you look at the AFC South as a whole, it is a very, very good division. I mean, I always think the AFC North is probably the best division in football. At minimum, it's the most competitive with top to bottom. But I think a division this year that's going to be a lot of fun to watch is the AFC South. Obviously, Anthony Richardson coming back, the Colts. I think Steichen is a great coach. Um, I think he's done really good things up there in Indy. Obviously, Jacksonville is still, you know, you're kind of, Jacksonville's kind of in that window where, you know, they, a couple of years ago or the last couple of years, you thought they were going to really make that push and hasn't quite come to fruition, but they still have the ability, especially with Trevor Lawrence. Obviously, the Texans, we know what they are. And then the Titans, we're going to see what happens with Will Levis, new coaching staff. Um, so I love watching AFC South, obviously, for myself, but I think it's going to be truly one of the better divisions to watch this whole year. I liked what you said there about the Texans. Like, the expectations are just getting to a point where is this even realistic in a guy's second year? You know, mm-hmm. like, this is CJ Stratt, but he's putting it on himself. You know, you add Stephon Diggs there. Everybody's expecting Stephon Diggs to have like MVP year next year. And we, hey, we're pulling for you. CJ, don't put that pressure on yourself. But you also nope. have to think like crazy, like. Stephon Diggs, unbelievable player. Nico Collins is also still mm-hmm. there. Tank Dell, like they have not Dalton Schultz. Like it is, I mean, if you truly look at that squad and then yeah. you also, okay, so then you say, okay, if they have all those skill players, then they must not have that great of an offensive line because of the money issues. Well, yeah, well, they have Laramie Tunsil. They have Titus Howard. Like they are, they are built well. And I think you do have to give credit to Nick Casario. I think you have to give credit to D'Amico and the vision he's building. But I mean, Really, I'm trying to temper it myself because of how excited I am. But I, it's really hard to look at that team and not be super excited. You guys are supposed and to. And then suck. Nico Autry, like some of like the some of the people that they've added, like that were. You go down the list and some of the people that they've added. I mean, it's a really, really solid squad. Great city, yeah. mm-hmm. great people, the food, great yeah. fans, the food. You have the best chefs in the entire city working, working for, for the them. Texans. Mm-hmm. But they're supposed oh, to suck at football. Yeah, yeah they should. They're supposed to. Nice linebacker, too, Asher. He's pretty good. Yeah.